Yo, what's up, everybody? Jumping here, and I am back with my noobs guide for Elden Ring. In the last episode, I did all a Stormville Castle, and I got my weapon to max, so I am OP. Now, in this episode, we're going to be focusing on the lake area, but we're going to be doing the central part because there's actually three different parts to the lake you have the central, you have the western, and you have the eastern. So it sounds like three videos to me. Now I'm a little conflicted because I think I might actually do the main castle in the next episode. Because I'm going to try to clear all the central part. Then I'll do the main castle. Then maybe I'll do like the western part and the side castle. It just makes more logical sense to me to do it that way. But I'm not sure yet. Now I'm at the round table because there's a lot to do here. Many NPCs to talk to. And some quest lines to progress. Now before we do anything though I want to level up. I forgot to bring this up when I picked it up in the last episode, but we got a Lord's Rune. This is worth 50,000 runes. That's a lot. We also have an item called the Remembrance. Now, you get these for beating the main bosses of the game. If you come in here with the finger, you can talk to this lady and you can trade these for weapons. Sometimes it can be spells. It can even be talismans. But in this case, I don't like either of these weapons, so I don't want them. And what that means is that I'm just going to use it. And by using it, I can get some more runes. So, not a bad deal. But there will be times where I'm going to want to use it. Maybe if you're trying to collect every spell in the game or something like that. Or every weapon. You might want to hold on to these. You can get duplicates of them. So that is something. But in this case, I don't care about this at all. So let's go ahead and level up. And I can get my dexterity to 30. Yay. Now I can start focusing on Vigor again, or I might even go for some Endurance. Now there's one NPC over here, I want to talk about him real quick. I'm not going to talk to him, and I haven't yet, because of the fact that he's going to move. The reason why is because once you go to the Capital Outskirts area, which we've already been there, up here, if you talk to him, he will want to move, and he will move over here where the map pillar was, and that will be the start of his side quest. We're going to be doing his side quest, but that's going to be when we're focusing on the capital outskirts area. So until then, I'm not even talking to him, but if you've already talked to him, it's fine. Don't give him or anyone else any prayer books or the sorcery scrolls. Save it for a giant turtle in a church. I know that sounds crazy, but the giant turtle is the best because the giant turtle doesn't move. These NPCs like to move around and it's annoying. Now we have D over here, we can actually talk to him, and we can actually bring up that sorcerer guy. I guess first we have to ask him about himself, but we will eventually be able to bring up the sorcerer guy. But we gonna kill D right now, he about to die. So up here on this balcony, this is that sorcerer guy, I talked about him so much in the last episode, it was crazy. But now we can go in and bring up the fact that we beat the boss, he's gonna give us a weapon for that. That's a pretty good weapon, I like it a lot. And we can also ask about D, so it's one of his friends, and D does have a brother, and that is kind of its own little side quest. So just bring it all up, get out in the open. Now we can ask about that blood stain. if you remember that, I talked about it. Now this really doesn't do anything, I believe it's just kind of lore, you're not going to get like a special item for doing this quest. But this is a little tiny mini quest. Also if you want to buy stuff from them, go for it. And now... Let's come over here, and I'm going to go and talk to this girl. Now, I've already talked to her before. I already explained this. This is going to give me a debuff. And the reason why I didn't do it right away was because I was waiting for the sorcerer guy to come to the round table. That way, I can do it all at once. Because, yes, there is a little side quest here. It's not important. If you missed it, don't worry about it. Like I said, it's just some lore. The more important one is actually going to be the second one, which is about this dagger. Now this dagger we have to give to D, and D is going to die. So it's the second option, which is the whole thing, may I ask a favor. She's going to give us the dagger, and now we can ask her about the dagger, yada yada yada, you get the idea. But we can say this too, which is going to be more about the sorcerer guy, and she's going to give us a clue, which we will do it. But it doesn't really matter in terms of her. Because once we get this item, we can just give it to the sorcerer guy. He's going to be happy about it. She has nothing else to do with it. 
In fact, you might not even actually need to talk to her at all. Really, it's all about just getting a clue to where to find this thing for the sorcerer guy. But we're done with that. So now let's go and talk to D and we can go ahead and give him the dagger. You do need to reset this area though. That is important. And we can also ask about the sorcerer guy. Why not? If you're listening to all the dialogue, it's all interesting. I would recommend it. I like the dialogue a lot. Don't worry about like buying the incantations. You will still be able to buy them even when he's dead. So it's not a big deal. So I gave him the dagger. Now what I'm going to do is use that one item to get rid of the debuff. So just use it now. And let's go ahead and kill another bird with another stone. Let's jump down here. Jumping down here is going to have an NPC invader come in. And trust me, if you're really weak and you come down here, this can be a nightmare. But it should be very easy for us. Now, don't attack right away because we're going to get an emote. So let's definitely do that. Thank you. Now we can attack and try to murder this thing. My god. You got to understand, that's crazy. That is insane, the amount of damage I can do. Because if you have ever came down here when you're really weak, it is such a nightmare, trust me. But there is a room over here as well, and in this room we can get a weapon, which I believe is a fist weapon, but it's actually kind of cool. Because this is a really decent weapon if you're a faith build. The only downside is that it only does holy damage, and that's not normally a good thing. Some enemies are going to resist certain things like lightning or holy or fire. And if you're only doing that one type, it's not very good. And I know what you might be thinking, well, what about physical? Yeah, there are some enemies that resist physical, but there's not many. So if I hit this thing, it's going to take me back to the entrance. And hopefully that will reset the area. And I think it will because we got a loading screen. So now this one room is going to open up. And that room is going to be where we're going to find D. It's going to be past the blacksmith, so, yep, it's open up. Let's run in there, and we can loot his dead body, get his armor, which we will need for his brother. That's another part of some type of quest. I don't know what quest you would call it, this one or not. And now she is going to go away. And we'll see her later, but much later. And she won't be here anymore. That's the main thing. That's why I wanted to wait for the sorcerer just to get that out the way. But if we actually do come down here, there is one last thing we can do while we're here. And that is open up these doors. Now, the second one is going to have a prayer book. If you don't care about prayer books, don't waste your keys. This first door only will cost one of the keys. This one is going to cost two. So this one is really not worth it if you don't care about incantations. So let's go ahead and open this up, and this is going to be a weapon, so I will take that. Thank you very much. Let's come in here. There's one more chest, and this is going to be the prayer book. And like I was saying, if you don't care about it, don't waste your keys, and you will be happy for it. But now, we have done everything here. I do want to point something out, and that's the merchant. If you want to go ahead and buy some more stuff, if you have the runes, do it now, I guess, at this point of the game. It's not a bad idea. The merchant will sell some of the stone keys. Totally worth buying. Also, you can get a memory stone, which is going to give you more memory, which means you can equip more spells. That's kind of nice, too. And if you do want to use rune arcs, the merchant sells five rune arcs. So definitely not a bad deal. I'm going to buy one key just because why not. But where we're going to go... First, before we do anything else, we're going to try to get our summon, our ashes, up to plus 5. Now, we can do that by coming here and then going down to this tree. There's a catacombs down here. We can get the upgrade material for level 3, level 4, and level 5. So, pretty good deal, and getting your ashes up to plus 5 is going to help a lot. So, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to cut this ahead, and I'll see you guys in a moment. Alrighty, well, let's go ahead and put a beacon down by the tree so we know where we're going. Let's hop on our horse. And remember, I talked about this way a long time ago in episode one. This is a dangerous area. We OP now, so we can actually kill everything here. We really shouldn't have a problem, but it still is kind of a dangerous area. Now, we need to go down there, and it should be safe just walking off over here. 
And I would actually recommend, let's actually get to the catacombs right away, and then we'll fight this boss. I wanted to do this, and I've been thinking about it for a while, just to go ahead and get my summon up to plus five. And another thing too, I want to bring this up as a correction from the last video. I said in that video that you can't summon your ashes when you have an NPC co-oper. You can. People were quick to point that out and say you can actually summon the ashes still. So that's really kind of overpowered to be honest in my opinion. But also I did watch a really cool video. I would recommend it. It's the pacifist run of the game where a guy went through the whole game and then no damage. He let his summons kill everything. That was crazy. All he did was just heal the summons. And in that video, I could see he was able to summon NPCs and have his ashes as well. So, this fight. The main thing about this fight, this thing is going to constantly jump up in the air and do a butt slam. And when it does, it's going to do Scarlet Rot. you got to get behind it. So what I recommend is try to move to the right and get close and try to not stand in the scarlet rot if you have to run away which you might that's a big problem because that's when it's going to start doing its range attack and trust me that attack is very annoying but you should be able to block most of it no problem and i talked about this before which is you can actually kind of dodge to the left and move to the left and you can avoid most of it but we can get some free damage off right away by just running in i should have buffed Let's run in, and I'm trying to block that. There we go. Big damage, nice, but here's the Scarlet Rot, so I'm going to block and move to the side. I'm able to block most of it, but as you can see, it's going to spam it. If you can get behind it, though, you are safe. It's not a problem. So there's my follow-up, and again... Oh, no, I did not mean to do that. I did not mean to do that attack at all. Got a chug. Here is what I was talking about, which is the annoying range attack. So I'm just going to move to the left. You see how it all misses me? Very nice. And we want the melees, but it's going to constantly spam the Scarlet Rot. It's so annoying. But basically, every time we get a chance, we can easily just go ahead and go for our attack. And one more, and it's done. Lock this attack. And follow it up. Boom. Now, what's nice about this boss and the stuff that you're going to get for your mixed potion is that we're going to get Stamina Regeneration. That's pretty good. In fact, I think I'm going to switch out the Bubble Shield. I'm not a big fan of the Bubble Shield. It can be very good at times, but the only issue I have with the Bubble Shield is that it's only one hit. So to me, I kind of prefer the Health Regeneration, but I also really do like the Stamina Regeneration. The other item that we got there is actually a boost to fire damage. That's really good. If you're using any type of fire weapon or a fire attack, that can be very, very good. Now this place is annoying because guess what? We got gargoyles, but we have an awesome shield. We have a max weapon. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. But over here, we are going to find the upgrade material for the ashes. We're going to get the level 3 upgrade, the level 4, and the level 5. So we're going to get all of them. Now just go ahead and send the elevator back up. I believe this is one of the ones, yes it is, where if you send it back up, you can drop down. That's the proper way of going. But right here, that's a level four one. And if we come this way, there is Scarlet Rot. I've talked about this before, it's very annoying. Don't stick around here. That's the level five, so we're pretty much done. If we wanna leave now and just say, screw this, I'll come back later, we can. Because there's a level 3! That's all we really needed to do. But because we're here... Why not? Let's clear it. It shouldn't be too much of an issue. So we can already see an annoying gargoyle. It bounces off. We do that. Easy! We have another one. Of course there's going to be like 50 of them in here. And probably one's hiding behind stuff. So come on, do something. Okay, I guess I'll do something. Now this one's coming at me. Take him out. Look around real quick just to make sure. The place we need to go is down. But I do think we want to come over here first because here's the switch. So this is important, you annoying gargoyle. I hate you. I hate all of you. Just stop hiding. 
and I will be happy. Let's hit the switch and we can go ahead and grab this upgrade material as well. And now we just need to go back and look, missed the flower. So we got another level three one. Awesome. So we, we will need to drop down and then figure out where to go. I know that there's more scarlet rot here, so just understand that. And the main thing is try to not get that on you. If you get scarlet rot on you, it's kind of a GG. I'm gonna be honest, because it's going to suck. So over here, here it is. We just wanna to go to the right. So watch out for all that crap. But go to the right, and you're not gonna get any more rot on you. And just look around, because you know what's hiding in here somewhere. I would be shocked. Oh, it's crabs. Okay, I am shocked. Let's pick that up. Pick that up as well. And we can actually go up this ladder over here. And there's gonna be something up here. But let's just go ahead and check it out. And yeah, that boss outside, I'm telling you, on my very first playthrough, that boss was a nightmare. And you can easily struggle against that boss, so don't feel bad. But the main thing is, try to get behind it whenever it does the butt slam. That butt slam can just wreck you with that Scarlet Rot. Because Scarlet Rot is super annoying in this game. It's awful. There's probably one behind me. I know it. I know there's one behind me. Let me look. No, I guess there wasn't. Okay, well, I feel dumb now. Pick that up. Probably another one in this room. Around the corner somewhere. Hello. Nope. But we're getting some of the helmets. That's kind of cool. I hate the way they look. I think they look ugly. But just go ahead and do the guard counter against him. There's another one. I'm just going to keep moving. That way that will miss me. And somehow my attack missed. Eh, if you're going to fall down, dude, I'm not going to go down there to get you. Although I guess I might have to. Do I? No, I don't. We're just gonna go the other way. So we're gonna go back the way we came, and we're going to go back down the ladder, and then run through the Scarlet Rot again. Now those enemies that were dropping down, the slug, I always say slug, but really it's more like sludge, those enemies, they should actually be blocking our way. You can probably kill them, or more than likely we can just jump over them. So let's try doing that. Jump over, goodbye, see y'all later. I don't wanna waste my time killing them, because they take like no physical damage at all. So do not roll. That's a good tip. Remember that. Don't roll in the rot. Same with poison. If you do, you're gonna get poison or rot on you and it's gonna suck. Now in here, if I remember the boss here correctly, this is kind of annoying. So we definitely wanna summon. Let's definitely summon our ashes and hopefully they can do the trick because look at this. It's a gank boss. There's two of them. Uh-oh. So we can block, and now one is being distracted. That's good for us, and ow. That attack sucks. Ow, fire. That attack sucks. Oh, oh, more fire. Oh my god, so much fire. My dogs are so weak. It sucks, man. Main thing here is just trying to get an opportunity to do an attack. It's only going to take, like, a couple, so that's good. But there we go. One's dead. Broke our guard, but whatever. Stamina regeneration is nice because it will let you guard more. Do that attack, and I got hit, but whatever. Slam down, nice. Now we can do our juicy counter, and there we go. So, definitely a harder boss battle, but not that bad. But the main thing is that we wanted to get the stuff to upgrade our ashes, so that's what I'm gonna go do right now. I'm gonna go back to the round table, I'm gonna talk to the girl, and I'm gonna upgrade. Alrighty guys, well I went ahead and got my wolves up to plus five. I had the girl upgraded at the round table. Now it's time to start actually working on this lake. So we're gonna start from this lake shore area and we're gonna go down here to this still water cave. Put your beacon about right there and you're gonna have no problem finding it. Now this cave is kind of annoying because it's one of the poison caves and you know I don't like them. Luckily it's not scarlet rot. We don't have to deal with that for a while. But once we do, trust me, it's pretty awful. But this cave is going to get you a talisman. It's one to remember. It's not good for this build. But other builds, especially with fast weapons like Twin Blades, this is a pretty good talisman. It's going to give you attack power. And that's going to be based on how many times you can attack the enemy. So with something really quick like dual katanas or if you're rocking a Twin Blade, really good. 
Now, because there's poison in here, I'll probably use the mixed potion and the health regen to counter it. But I do want to mention that down there, there's a plant. There's nothing down there. So we're not going to actually go in that area. There is another item where there is a plant. And we will go get that. But just down there, it's kind of a waste of time. Now right over here, there's going to be a bat. So pick him out. And there's a bunch of crafting material. So let's pick that up. But there we go. The annoying enemies that are in here with their stupid homing projectiles that has AoE to it. If you get hit by that, if you stand in it, you're getting poison. I want to try to not get poisoned right away. The longer I can not be poisoned, the better. And let's come down here now, and there's going to be some crafting stuff. A bunch of items, but there's also a bunch of bats down here. Oh boy. And there's actually like a really creepy one. And the bats are up there. I'm trying to trigger them. Come and kill me. Get me. There you go. And I'm gonna take you out. I'm getting poisoned. I don't care. Whatever. Bring it on. Oh, uh, get out. Yes. Ah. This annoying one. Now, these are kind of creepy. I don't even know what to call them. They are bats. They're kind of like female bats. They remind me of like a siren or something because they do sing. I have a friend and it was really funny because my friend would always be saying like, Oh man, I hate those creepy enemies, the singing, I hate the singing, and I'm like, what are you even talking about? Then I realized, oh, he's talking about those things, the bats, and they are creepy. Now that I'm poisoned, I'm going to use the mixed potion. We also just got the sage set, which is pretty cool for a light armor set. And we are going to go this way. Let's pick that up. Watch out, there's more of these guys. Oh god. I don't want to get hit by that crap. Even though I'm poisoned now, it doesn't really matter. Oh, you. You gotta love that. So, so cool. Take out the plant real quick. I'm gonna do a jump R2. Oh, wow, we got a bat down here as well. And where's that guy? I would assume he would follow me down, but... Nope, he's just gonna sit up top and snipe me the whole time. Come here. There we go. Pick up this material as well. And there is a bat. It's trying to get me, but I just want to get the item. Thank you. And give me the crafting material as well. Now let's go and deal with the bat. And there are some crafting materials down in this poison. So it's up to you if you want to pick them up. It's just poison blooms. You find a lot of them. Bunch of baby plants over here. Take them all out. Give me the crafting material. What is that? Another bat? Okay, cool. I will deal with that. Over here, there's a bunch of these guys with the projectiles, so let's try to take them out first. There's also two plants over here, the big ones. That's never fun. Go ahead and do the Ash of War and the follow-up. One more R1 and you are dead. I'm going to do my jumping R2. Now, my little wombo combo should take this out. And there we go. Like I said, if you go this way, all you're going to find is maybe a couple of crafting materials and you're going to have that other giant plant. There is no item over there. Trust me, I've already done this part earlier and I messed up. That's the thing about this walkthrough is that it's one thing running around and finding everything and preparing myself for it. It's another thing trying to figure out the order I want to do it in. And that's what actually messes me up the most. So let's go ahead and take out these guys. There's going to be a bunch of them sleeping over here. So just pick that up. And let's just start taking them all out. These guys, I think they can drop their helmet. Their helmet can be used to give you an attack power boost if you poison an enemy. Which I do believe poisoning yourself does count. So it's something you might see when you watch a video and it's like how to do insane damage and get like 13,000 attack power. Well, that's one of the things they're doing. So let's go ahead and use up the FP potion. I'm going to get poisoned again. And I'm going to summon. Why not? While I'll do that, I will also pull out my dagger and buff my summon. Awesome. Now this boss should be actually really easy. So well, watch out for that. You don't want to get hit by that. That's a grab move. But yeah, we are wrecking this boss. Ha ha. And that's going to drop the talisman for us. So that is awesome. Thank you very much. I don't think there's anything in here besides just the boss. So now let's get out of here. And where we're going to go 
is we are actually going to go back over to these ruins. Now, you should have this grace because of episode one. So we're just going to go here now and clear all of that. I do want to point this out. This is like a warming stone, I believe. It's behind the church. There is a bunch of tombstones and a graveyard. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting these markers down. It's going to be a little tree. I guess it's meant for plants. But I'm putting them down when I find an item and I pick it up. I'm going to put that marker down because I'm not going to go around getting all the small items. So you're going to see a bunch of these. I'm going to be pointing these out. If you want to go and get those items, just put a beacon. Trust me, this is the exact location on the map to go and find it. So that's really all you got to do. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this ahead. I'm going to see you guys in a moment. Now, there's going to be a bunch of nighttime activities to do here, like every area. There's going to be a couple of the death bird bosses that we're going to fight. But also, we will be going to this one place where I think it has to be night. Now, if you remember this spot, we ran past all the enemies. There's only really one here that's really annoying. Take this one out right here because that thing can absolutely destroy you. Even though you're OP, it can knock you off your horse and just murder you. Now, these things, I think, are wraiths. So, we're going to get an item over here, actually. Which, I don't know what it does. It might pacify them. It might make them fight for you. It might summon some random ones. I really don't know. I've never used it. But we will be getting it. And I cannot hit this thing. I look like a fool. Come here. Die. There we go. And take that out. Actually, the item is kind of like the bell that they ring. So, maybe it just does an attack like them. I don't know. Like I said, I've never used it before. So pick up that item back here. Another enemy and an item. So take this one out. Now let's pick that up. And I'm going to show you on the map exactly where the staircase is leading down. But it's going to be just over here. Just in case you're running around looking for it. It's going to be right there. That's the location. Now down here, we're going to get this bell. Which I don't know what it does. It might do the actual attack that they do. But... It's called like the Wraith Calling Bell, something like that. So let's go in and get it. And then we're going to go and do a side quest here. Now what's really interesting, I want to point this out. Somebody actually left a comment. Now I can't verify this. But if you remember in the last episode when I was going to go get the max weapon, I did mention that it can be annoying, especially if you're watching this years in the future. It can be annoying trying to get some invasions so that you can actually do the side quest to max out your weapon. Well, someone said that if you actually go to this place, it's called the Volcanic Manor, you can get some side quests to invade NPCs. And those do count for that White Mass NPC's quest line. You can just do that. Now, I wonder, can you go into the NPC invasion and just return to your world and do that three times? And would it count? Because if it would, that would be an epic little thing you can do to help speed that up. Plus, if you don't want to do any real PvP... It's a little thing you can do. This NPC, this quest line we're about to do, it's really short, really simple. This is going to start our journey to the Volcanic Manor. This is where you want to go. It's going to be the telescope over here, and you got that circle thing. And that's where I put the beacon, and that's where we're going to go. So we just need to talk to this lady and tell her that we'll go and get her necklace for her. And then we want to buy the necklace because you can kill this NPC. Trust me, you're going to want to. He's annoying. But don't do it because I believe he does have some further stuff in the future. Normally, the rule is this. Don't kill the NPCs. No matter how much you really want to because you don't like them, just don't do it. It's normally not a good idea. But you see, FromSoft is real tricky. And sometimes they love to throw an NPC in to kill a bunch of the other NPCs to make you actually have to go and kill that one. Now, I don't think that is a thing in this game, so you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to keep that on the map, actually, although I guess I can't remove it. So this little icon, I'm putting this down where there's an NPC. So guess what? There's an NPC right here. We're going to go and get this grace. If you don't have it, it's just on this little island right here. This is the second location of Patches. Now, we are not going to be finding the third location and the fourth location and the 50th location. We're not doing that. I already talked about that before. Because his quest will not be affected by every location. The main thing is you can generally... Okay? You can generally get some more dialogue out of him. 
Now, by the way, I didn't do it there because I know that my controller is going to make a ton of noise. But you can actually, like, press L1 and R1 and just repeatedly do that when you get grabbed. It can help you get ungrabbed quicker. So you don't take as much damage. That's a little tip. And I've heard that you can press every button as well. And I've heard people say that that doesn't work. So there's a lot of arguments out there. I think it does work, but I would say L1, R1. But I've also heard L2, R2, so it's really hard to say. But let's go ahead and come up here, and we could talk to him. And you can also buy some more stuff from him if you haven't bought it yet. And the next time we're going to see him, we're going to see him at the Volcanic Manor, because I'm not going to do his other stuff. Now, we can buy this item. This can help with a boss battle later, so why not? You definitely don't need these, because we already got the permanent item don't waste your runes on these at all. But yeah, that's basically it. Make sure you get the grace. But another thing is, once you do, let's make it nighttime. Because we can actually start fighting some of these nighttime bosses. And doing some of these nighttime activities. So the first one, and the little marker on my map, you're going to know this. Let me remove this now. But it's going to be this. This will indicate a boss. So, right over here, is going to be our very first Death Bird. Now, this one's going to be easier than the other one. There's two in this location. This one is mainly a physical one. The other one is going to be the Frost one. And I personally think the Frost ones are way harder. You can't summon your Ashes for this. For whatever reason. Every other boss you can, but not this one. Okay, so let's just go ahead and attack. Try to do our follow-up. And the main thing is, most of these attacks you're going to be able to block because it's all physical. So yeah, just block it and try to find your opening and do your attack. And it should be pretty easy. Ow! Come here. No, 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 no. One little running attack. Ah, no! Stop it. Alright, running attack. And I smacked him right in his big fat skull. And we got him. So, that's going to give us something. What is it? Oh, it's a talisman. That is basically the red tear stone ring in this game. Whenever your health is low, you will get an attack bonus. So that's pretty cool. Now where we're going to go is, first of all, let's actually come over here. And we're going to come over here. Because this is where we need to go for the quest. Over here is one of the purple items. And it's actually a pretty good one. It's going to be for your mixed potion. And this is going to be the dexterity one. So it gives you plus 10 dexterity for 3 minutes. Now this weapon is a dex weapon. That's not bad. If you have like a ton of dex, like 80 dex or something, it's really not going to help you. But if you have a low amount of dex like I do, only 30, it can definitely be pretty nice. So maybe I'll use it, I don't know. But let's take out these guys. And it's just right up here on this little island. Also there is a crafting material so I'll pick that up as well. Now we're going to head over to this other beacon. This is where the guy is. Like I said, he's annoying, but just go ahead and buy it from him. And he will show up again at some point. I'm really not sure because I don't think I've ever fully done this quest before. We will be doing it, but I have personally not fully done it. So you can tell him to give you the necklace. He does drop some stuff. You can get his helmet if you kill him. You can get his weapon if you kill him. But you probably can get it regardless. So just buy the necklace from him, and now we can leave, and we can go in and talk to him again. He does sell, like, some type of item. So just talk to him, and you can also ask him about the NPC, and she is very weird, okay? You'll see it later, I don't even want to talk about it because it's a spoiler technically, but it's very crazy stuff. The Volcanic Manor is just wild. So let's go ahead and hop on our horse now and we are going to go back and give her the necklace and then we're going to teleport over somewhere where you might not have this grace. I'm going to try to show you exactly where it's at. But this other location is where the other deaf bird is. Then we'll make our way over to this one tower and that tower is going to, I think, only be active at night. I could be wrong on that, but I believe it has to be night and we can just go ahead and do that. We have to find some like turtles and stuff. But yeah, let's go back and talk to her. Now, I did think about actually, like, going to show the quest in this episode. I decided not to because she can end up being in one of two locations. And I believe she's not going to be in the location I want her to be in. Because there's an easy one. 
but that's more to do with what we have done. Since we have actually already been to the capital outskirts, we took that one lift with the medallion, she's not going to be there. That's the easiest way to find her. You just take the lift and she's like right on the other side. The other place is she's going to be by some ruins. So it's really easy to find, but I just don't want to go out of my way to go and do that right now where I can wait until we're actually working on that. If we actually go directly north, you could see I put a little tree there in this circle thing. There is a smithing stone in there. Same with over here in this circle thing, smithing stone. Up here by these trees, there's another smithing stone. And there's another one right here. So there's a bunch of smithing stones. Just go ahead and pause the video. And if you want to put beacons down and go and get those smithing stones, go right for it. Now, where we're going to go is up here. There's going to be a grace, so you can see the little island. But this is where the other death bird is going to be. So go and try to get the grace first. You might need to make it night again. But yeah, get the grace, and then we will go and fight the next death bird. Alrighty, well, I just went ahead and teleported over here. It's still night for me, and I'm at this grace. So let's find the death bird. I believe it's just over here. Hello, where are you? Now this one is much harder because it's going to be the frost one. Trust me, I don't like the frost ones. Mainly because they have these frost attacks and those can be annoying. So it also has a grab. You have to watch out for the grab. It's going to like scream when it does the grab. And by the way, that weapon is called the death poker. You can get that weapon from one of these birds. That's a really good weapon. It is an intelligence, and I think it might be a strength weapon. It could be dex. It might be dex. I don't really know. Okay, you probably want to roll to avoid that, by the way. Blocking that is not very smart. Now, we can kind of tank through a lot of this. It's still not very smart. Hello. Stop it. But yeah, that weapon is great. It really is. And people were sleeping on it. Finally, people kind of figured it out. Because, of course, somebody came out with a video. And it's like, oh, this weapon is amazing. And then everybody started using it. That kind of is how it goes. But I went ahead and tried it after I've seen that video. And I got to say, I agree. Oh, watch out. That's a little scream. And it's going to do a lot of damage. It's annoying. But I was able to tank through that fight. But the reality is, it wasn't a very clean fight. I got hit a bunch. And I even got frostbit. Now that's a spell. I don't even know if it's good or not. I don't know nothing about spells. But now where we're going to go, I can go ahead and remove this. We are going to go ahead and come over here. Now you already have this grace from episode one. So I'm just going to go ahead and teleport over here. But there was a tower here and we're going to go and do that. This is a nighttime activity, I believe. I'm not 100%. But the moment we interact with this thing, we're going to be able to go ahead and have all these turtles spawn. And a bunch of zombies too. They're all ghosts though. Now one thing you will need for this is some type of range. At least I think you need range. You might be able to get it in another way. But let's just go ahead and put the bow on. Now we're going to have the fat roll probably. So that's going to suck. I should have actually scrolled up instead of down like a dum-dum. Honestly, anything will work. Well, the bow. Why not? And let's just go ahead and come over here. And we need to read this book. Now we're going to have the zombie spawn. And we're going to have these turtles spawn. So the first one, if you're online, it's definitely going to help you. Trust me. Because even I'm going to struggle with this, I bet you. But where we're going to go is we're going to look for the first one in a tree. Here's some messages. And if you see the messages, you're probably close to one. So there it is in the tree. Let me pull out my bow. I'm going to try to lock on, but that's not going to work. So I'm just going to aim in, and I'm going to shoot it. It's going to fall, and we are done with that. Now, the next one is really easy to find. You just need to kind of head north by this rock. Avoid all of the zombies. You don't need to fight them. But just keep going, and you're going to eventually see it. There it is. And just go and take it out. And the last one I always struggle with because it's going to be below us. I do believe we need to walk off to find it. So let me just double check. Look off this cliff. I believe it's more this way. So let's just head on over. This is where the one was in the tree. And I'm just going to look off until I actually see a little drop off here. 
I don't see it. It might be over here. Let me go ahead and hop off. Maybe these messages will be pointing this out. That would be nice. Yep, that's it. Seek down. So hop on down. It should be down here somewhere. There it is. And take this one out. And we are done. Now the barrier is going to be removed. And we can go inside. And you know what this is. This is one of these rises. They're towers. And they're going to always give you the same thing. Which is going to be a memory stone. So let's go and get that. Memory stones will allow you to equip more spells. We don't need that at all with this build. But for other builds, this is something you definitely want to come and do. Just to get the extra spells. So I'm going to hop off the horse. And we need to climb all the way up. And I guess I'll probably make it daytime after this. Because I don't like it to be night. But there's nothing else we need to do here at night. There's none of those night riders. Which is kind of surprising. But it makes sense because they would be riding around in the water. There are some of them. I believe there's at least one in this area. But it's going to be like either on the east or the western side. But not in the actual central area. So I'm just going to go ahead and teleport down. Now go ahead and put a beacon down right now if you want. In this location. Because down here is going to be a bunch of graves we can rob. Now to me I kind of deem those more important than just the basic items. Because why not go and get a bunch of runes. I think that's actually kind of important. So let me go ahead and make it noon. One thing I don't like about making it noon is that it will generally become night fairly quickly and that's annoying. If I make it morning though, especially in this lake, it's probably going to be so foggy, it's just as bad as if it was night where you can't see anything. Basically, just ride on over. This is southwest from that grace. That can help as well. But yeah, there's a lot of little tombstones over here where we can rob them. There's some enemies. I believe it's some of those Wraith enemies that we were fighting before. Yep. So you might want to take them out. Just because they're going to be trying to shoot you the whole time if you don't. And let's make sure we pick everything up. There's a lot here. This is a lot of freaking little graves. I guess it's because it's the only one in this little area. So they kind of make up for it by having 50 graves and 50 enemies to annoy you. Ah, leave me alone. Give me all this stuff. I want to kill you. Don't knock me off the horse. They're doing no damage to me. Probably damaging my horse though. Which is of course annoying. Give me that. Die. Thank you. Give me this one as well. Leave me alone. I seen another one. I want to get it. That might be it. Of course I didn't pick it up. Give it to me. And I think that might be it. So we got all of them. Um, nope, we didn't. Of course we didn't. You always gotta double check just because you never know. Plus, there's so many of them. Now give me this one. I think that's the last one. Man, those projectiles home in so good. Well, that's it. Now the next place we're gonna go is actually going to be down here. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, but this would have probably been over here another smithing stone. Go ahead and get that but we're gonna come down here because this is underneath the bridge it's gonna be very easy to see because you can see the bridge and it's like all broken up we're gonna go down there and we are going to get a grace and there's gonna be a scarab over there as well now watch out I really want to avoid that I have a feeling there might be an item in there oh god I gotta check it for the walkthrough but watch out for the lobsters you think the crabs are bad Oh my god, the lobsters actually have memes too. They're little snipers as well. There's nothing in here, I don't think. Um, necessary item? Maybe there might have been something in here. I picked it up. I have no idea. But I don't see a dead body, so that tells me there was an item in there, but whatever. Let's go ahead and head this way, and we will hit the grace. Okay, so I'm actually at the scare up. Ugh. And I got him. That's Shield Bash. So where my marker was is the exact location of the Scarab. But there is also a Grace here. So let me find that for you. It's underneath the bridge. There it is. So go ahead and get that if you want. And now we are going to head over here. And this is going to be where one of the walking mausoleums are. I always say the giant turtles. But they are kind of like turtles. But they have mausoleums on the back. 
Now, just like before, these can be annoying because you have to be careful. They can step on you and kill you. Also, there's all these knights out here. You can farm these guys for their armor, and you can get like a great shield from one of them. And the great shield's definitely not bad. It might even be better than the one I'm using. So I'm just trying to look at this one because Maybe I'm tripping here, but I don't see any white stuff. Ah, I haven't actually ever done this one before. Is that the white stuff? Now, if you don't see white stuff, that normally means that there's another way of taking this thing down. So, I guess there is another way. I'm gonna have to figure that out, guys. I've never done this one before. I just assumed there would have been white stuff. Well, it doesn't mean that we're done because there is a tunnel over here. Now, you're going to be able to see the tunnel. Again, you can see that, like, red cave-looking thing. So, you can put your beacon there if you want. So, I'm just going to ride on over here. And the tunnel should be somewhere over here. And let's go inside. And I'm going to go ahead and hop down. And then, I'm going to look that up and try to figure out how do you take that thing down. Because I really don't know. But I'm just going to walk off the side here. And let's check it out. There is a crafting material right there. So let's pick that up. And we can walk off here. There's going to be more crafting materials. So to be honest, you could probably take the elevator down. I don't know if that's really worth it. Especially because you can easily die doing this. Make sure you do the jump. Do the jump again. And it looks like there's even more crafting materials down here. So let's pick them up off the walls. And then hit the grace, and you should be good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut this ahead. Where's the grace? Okay, let me run a little bit further. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this ahead, because I'm going to look that up and try to figure out what's the deal with that particular mausoleum. And I'll show you in a moment. Alrighty, this looks dumb. I actually looked up the video. And it looks like this thing takes forever to actually get into position. And I would actually recommend maybe watching the part of the walkthrough about how to do that tunnel. Then doing this later because this looks like it's going to be annoying. Not only does it take forever to get into position. But from what I could tell it looks like it's really easy to mess this up. So let me show you on the map where I'm at. This is where you're going to need to go to get this walking mausoleum. This is the east gate. Now, you should have this grace because of episode one. And from here, we're going to head just east, a little bit southeast, I guess. And we can pretty much see that there's little jump off points. And that's how you're going to jump on top of this thing. Now, all of the white crap you need to hit is on the top. Once you make it up there, you're good. There's really no messing it up. But getting on top of it is going to be annoying because you have to wait for it to eventually walk its slow ass over here and that's what i'm going to do now one thing i can tell you right now is chill up here i would not drop down anywhere until you think that it's in the right spot so you can actually jump to it because if you look around you can see there's a bunch of these and also just to be double safe one thing i would say because i could see people dying in these videos Go ahead and put on this talisman, this long tail cat talisman, just because even when it's close enough, I've seen a couple people actually jumping off and dying. I also seen a video where you can shoot the white crap. Now you can see the white crap from here. Once it gets close enough, you can hit it with a bow. So that's another option. I don't want to do it that way because I don't want to waste a lot of arrows. And honestly, that's going to be kind of annoying and hard to hit all that crap because it is moving around. So I'm just going to chill here. I'm going to cut this ahead because I have no idea on how long this is going to take. And I'm going to wait until I think it's in a good spot. And I'm going to try to make this jump. Alrighty. That looks pretty good to me. Of course I cut it ahead and it only took about 30 seconds. Now I'm actually going to jump over here because I want to be lower down. Oh, it's going to turn. This is my chance. Oh my god, I'm going to die to gravity. This is so deaf. Well, at least I got to have my smoke break, and there goes my rune arc, so that was a waste. Now, I've already taken it down. I'm so sorry. But I choked the commentary so hard that I decided, you know what? Let me just go ahead and show you what I did. I did the exact same thing 
when I failed, but this time I made it. The only difference I'm going to show you is I dropped down to the third one. That's the little key. See, I panicked at the last second, and I didn't realize there was a third one because I was chilling up top the whole time waiting for it to actually get into position. But from right here, all you got to do, and you might want to get off your horse, and honestly, just jump down here right away just so that you're ready for it. But chill right here on this third one. Now, you know it's the right spot because the little lake actually pops up. And you can easily make the jump once it gets into position from here and you're not going to mess it up. Just do the double jump with the horse and you got it. Then hit all the white crap. It's going to come down and you can open up the door. Now, again, it's not that important right now because we don't have a lot of remembrance to actually care about. Later on, when you do have more, you might want to get a boss weapon and then you want to get the other boss weapon or you might want to get a spell and you want to get the other boss weapon so that's the reason why these exist is that you can get a duplicate copy of the remembrance so that you can go to that finger maiden lady and get the weapon and then you can get the spell or you can get both weapons or whatever it is that's why these are in the game but i normally don't bother with these just because i normally don't care but that's the thing is that if you do want to get all of the boss weapons or if you want to get all the spells and all that, you do need to take these down so you can get the duplicate copies of the Remembrance. Okay, now that that's done, we can actually go back and do the tunnel. Now the tunnel is pretty interesting. If I remember right, this is a pretty big tunnel. It's kind of crazy. So let's go ahead and walk inside. And we have right away this guy take him out and there's another guy now i'm not bouncing off these guys like the other ones so i don't need to actually two-hand my weapon but let's pick this up and if you jump up here there's gonna be one of these up on the wall nice now let's go ahead and run forward i'm actually gonna put my lantern on just because why not and there are a lot of this crafting material in here so just pick it up if you want there's no reason not to now let's go ahead and come down and unfortunately just like before there's another one of these gravity jumps in here and this jump kind of sucks this is a spot where you can totally die so watch my walkthrough and then you need to tell yourself is it worth it trying to make this jump especially if you do have a rune arc on or something you're not trying to actually lose it this jump might kill you so you need to run over here jump up now this is where it gets real tricky you need to make this jump so i'm just going to do a sprint and a jump and what i'm going to do is run kind of into the wall and then jump and again jump oh my god it's so freaking annoying jump grab this on the wall jump up and now we're going to jump again pick this up and we can finally jump back to the beginning so it's up to you. Do you want to make those jumps? Because trust me, you can easily fall down and mess that up. So let's come over here and walk down the steps. Take this guy out. Pick up all his stuff. Again, anytime you see these guys working on a wall, that's what it is. They are going to be either crafting material or it's going to be one of the upgrade materials. Something's going to be on that wall generally. Now back there, that's a shortcut. It's an elevator. This is a pretty big tunnel. It's kind of crazy, so you need a shortcut. Now let's go ahead and take this guy out. Pick up all that stuff. And let's go ahead and come on down. There's two guys down here, so let's take them out quick. Your Ash of War should one-shot them. Watch out, there are some wizards as well. Hello, goodbye. Ow! Stop doing that! That is annoying. Take him out. And let's go get his buddy, too. Hello! The jump R2 also one-shots these guys. No problem. So, let's come this way. I believe this is the wrong way. Watch out, guys. Chilling right here. Take him out. Now let's just do the little jump attack on this one. Pick up all the stuff. Remember, look at the walls. You actually have to jump up to get that one. Because anywhere in here on the walls, you might see some upgrade materials. And there's going to be a lot in here if I remember right. I believe it's a ton of these level three stones. So you might want to grab these because you will need them to potentially upgrade your shield. 
So let's come down here. I'm just going to take a look. So this is an elevator leading down. I'm going to say that's the right way to go. So instead, let's come over here and check this out. This is probably the wrong way. And what's in here? Just an item. Awesome. Pick that up. And on the wall, we have an upgrade material. So pick that up. And now we can go ahead and go to the elevator. Now, I need to look off the side to try to see what's off the side. There's always something. Oh, I'm fat rolling because of that stupid cat ring, which I didn't actually need at all. So let's put the arsenal charm back on. And yes, we can walk off. Oh, I'm still fat rolling. Oh, that's because I died. So now it's time for the crimson hood again. I'm not going to use another rune arc. I just don't see the point. I don't want to die in here to gravity. So that would be a complete waste. So let's go ahead and hop on down and see what's in here. And this is a path actually to take. I believe this is all right. Yeah, this is okay because we're going to get an item from this angle and there's really nothing back there besides the elevator. I'll show you in a second, but let's go ahead and walk off here. There's a message to try to help me out. Awesome. Pick that up. Let's get the item. Now we can just walk off right here to the bottom. And if you come back this way, this is where the elevator is. I'm just grabbing all the crap off the wall. But let's just take a look real quick. And this is the room. And I don't think there's anything in here. And I don't think there was anything else up there. So yeah, we're good. Now we can keep going. So we're going to go ahead and come on over here. You see how big this tunnel is? It's crazy, man. It's a huge tunnel. And I think we're getting close, though, to the end. And there is some stuff on the wall here. So give me that. Awesome. And I'll take the crafting material as well. Be careful. Just sprint across. You should be okay. And is the shortcut? Yes, the shortcut's over here. So take him out. Let's rush this guy. And I'm just going to hit this elevator and then walk off. Because if you do die to the boss or something, you can always just go ahead and hit the shortcut to come back quicker. And make sure you grab all of the stuff, the upgrade materials. And if you want it as well, grab all of the crafting materials. That one right there is a little bit hidden. So make sure you don't miss it. Now over here, there's still more to this tunnel. Watch out. You see that? Oh, hello. Mm -mm. Now, obviously, those guys are going to come down. So if you have any range, you can always shoot them to make them come down. There's also another one somewhere around here. I believe he's to the right. So let's roll through here and pick this up. And maybe they're going to come down now. Normally, there's always a trigger. Well, here we go. Well, that's cool. Awesome. They got bows. Mm-mm. Goodbye. Now, this is what I was thinking of. Up here, we got one. Can I do a jump? Ah, I just want to hit you. I can't get him. I don't think it's going to work. Nope. All right. Well, instead, I'm just going to rush these guys, and I missed, of course. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I'm getting shot. I've talked about these guys before with the multiple arms. They are annoying. They just are. So I'm chugging. I'm going to pick this up and this. Let's open up the chest. Grab that. And that's a weapon. I'm just making sure that all the walls are cleared. And I do believe the boss is just up here. So I'm just looking around still. And no, there's more to this place. My God. Okay. I take it back. The boss is coming up, but there is literally more. This is a big tunnel. So I'm going to hop down here. And look at all these upgrade materials right here. That's crazy. Oh, that's a big guy. That is a big one. Hello. Mm -mm, you bounce off. Now it's time for you to die. Let's pick that up. Ow, ow, ow. Mm -mm, stop. Take him out. My God. This is crazy. Okay. Got to chug again. We're running kind of low on the potions. Not good. Luckily, I'm pretty sure the boss here is a complete joke. More than likely. So just make sure you pick up all that stuff. And let's take this guy out. Pick that up. Double check all the walls because you never know. And of course, right here, there's a ton of stuff. Awesome. Now, is this the right way? No, this is probably the wrong way. The message said there's an item. So give me that. And that's a spell, a sorcery. Now, I believe 
we're done. I'm pretty sure the boss is up here. So let's run forward and check it out. Okay, we have another elevator. Well, you know what that means. And yes, we can hop down here. And let's hop down again. And look, there's one more upgrade material that's right there. Now be careful, do your jump. Always do the jump on this part because if you don't and you try to walk off, there is a very good chance you're gonna fall and you're gonna die. Trust me, it's happened to me multiple times. So let's pick that up. And now we can go and fight the boss. So let me check all my potions. I'm gonna go ahead and buff now. And I'm going to chug this. I'm going to use this, the mixed potion. And because we upgraded the summon, why not use the summon too? Okay, yeah, these things are kind of annoying, but this should be really easy. It's only annoying when you have to fight like 50 of these at once. And trust me, there are some awful gank fights with these things. And it really does suck. The big thing about these things is that they don't stun. Like, they are ridiculous. But you have to break their defense. Once you break the defense, it's GG and the fight is literally over. Now that she fell down, look at the damage she takes. That is crazy, right? Now, this place is important, and you're going to find more of these later on, but you're going to get these bell items, and that's how you're going to be able to buy the upgrade materials from the merchant at the round table. That is huge, mainly because we're able to actually just upgrade multiple weapons at that point. So that's really, really good stuff. So now, let me look around. The only place to go, so I just want to point this out for you guys. Over here, there is a ton of stuff, okay? We have multiple upgrade materials. All these little trees, these are upgrade materials like smithing stones. So again, if you want to pause the video and put beacons down to go and get all of these, go right ahead. But I'm going to go ahead and fast travel over to the grace. Now, we would have had that grace from the last episode because we were using that grace to get to the Rose Church. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this ahead. I'm going to see you guys in a moment alrighty so this is where we're gonna go and we're gonna start from the foley on the lake grace we're gonna put a beacon down right here so you can see there's a little bit of an opening put your beacon there again if you want to get any of those upgrade materials like the smithing stones that I have on my map go right for it but we're gonna come over here because there's kind of a little cave area it's very confusing and trust me I really hate this for the map because we're gonna go underneath this giant mountain and I spent about an hour and a half trying to figure out how to get to the top of this mountain where you can't do it you will go up there but it's gonna be much later in the game with a side quest but I wasted so much time on my first playthrough trying to figure out how do you get up there because I just thought there would have been some wind or something but you know you're in the right spot because you can see this looks like poison and I'm just going to ignore the giant crabs and stuff but we're going to kind of just ride forward and we will basically hit this village. Now there is an item right here. Let's pick this up. It's another smithing stone. I would have pulled up my map to show you but unfortunately there's enemies and I can't do that. So I'm going to grab all this too because these are just crafting materials. There's a ton of them here awesome and the place we need to go is this way which is kind of southeast when you're in this poison lake area we're just gonna head this way and then we're gonna turn around because there is this hill going up so as you can see there's all that we're gonna turn around and we're gonna head this way i'm gonna actually try to pull up my map now again this is super confusing because i'm underneath this mountain and you see, the very annoying thing about this is you can see all these structures up here and you're like, I know there's stuff up there. How do I get up there? I don't know. But this is where I'm at on the map. So we are going to head over here. This is this little village and we're going to see one of our friends. That is the girl who we summoned to fight that first major boss, Godric. So let's talk to her and just make sure she starts repeating herself. And what we're going to do is we're going to beat the boss in this area and then we can come back and talk to her again. And that's going to progress her quest. She's going to go back to the round table. So over here, there are some enemies. 
but just grab the item and that is important if you want to respect and there is a grace over here and a ghost so you can go in and talk to the ghost now before we do anything let's hit the grace and then we're going to go across this bridge because there's going to be an item across this bridge there's also a pretty nice little secret over here that i did not find until i had to look it up on a guide and trust me i was like man that's really hidden pretty good so watch out we have this annoying thing trying to hit us with spells but the item we're looking for is just right here so i'm being slow about it but we got it now i can get out of here i'm not gonna waste my time fighting all of that i guess i'll grab that item as well leave me alone stop shooting me with all these spells now we can come over here and this enemy is super easy but also stupidly annoying i hate these enemies so on the horse it should be easy just ride right up to it and smack it the main thing about this enemy is that it can dodge a lot of your attacks which is very annoying but the other thing is it can do some crazy damage to you it will like throw out this dust and this dust will then become fire and it does some really crazy damage so we have a bridge going that way but we don't want to go there yet we're gonna head over here now this is a little bit i guess more obvious to me now that i know it's here plus there's all the messages but trust me the very first time i came here i didn't see any messages this is when the game first came out but there is this pot over here if you attack it it's going to make this guy appear and now we can talk to him he's going to give you a secret piece of a medallion he's also going to actually tell you about this girl now we're going to go and meet the girl in this episode and i wanted to come here first so that i can get the medallion otherwise i would have been wasting my time basically because to talk to the girl you have to have this secret piece of the medallion and she is actually a summon and it's actually kind of cool because she will talk to us much later in the game so this little side quest that we're doing right now really will not finish until like the end of the game to be honest so now we're going to cross this bridge and there's going to be some more of these guys trying to hit us with spells there's also a scarab over there but that's an hp one so i'm trying to take these guys out because honestly they're annoying and we're about to get a boss so before the boss let's actually go ahead and hop off the horse and i want to summon and we can summon from here so summoning from here very nice and guess what we can actually summon that girl too remember i talked about this well i was wrong you could summon the ashes and you can summon the npcs once they're actually all in here i'm gonna go ahead and buff everybody and there are some other enemies that you have to deal with with this boss and this boss can do some crazy crazy damage i'm gonna be honest and it can absolutely destroy your guard so yeah let's just go ahead and give it a shot but this is about to be a gank fight really so i'm just gonna rush in and it's the jump attacks that's the attack look broke my guard i'm getting smacked luckily we have all of this gank going on here and oh my god oh there's more dogs ow no leave me alone dogs mm -mm. now that guy his normal attacks will bounce off of your shield which is good but his like double attacks he does they don't and they will wreck your guard so take out the dumb dogs haha <laughs> my dogs are better than your dog and we are good so now there is an item over here there might even be a grace i'm just looking around let me just get on the horse to double check it might have just been the boss but i'm pretty sure there's definitely an item and no there's not a grace although i could swear there was okay so the items down here let's grab this and it's just a rune arc but the main thing was the boss we went and took it out and i'm just double checking everything i think we're good so now we can go and talk to that girl again and that's going to progress her quest but also we really came over here mainly just to get that secret piece of that medallion that way we can actually go and talk to this other lady and start that little quest although that quest will not finish until the very end of the game just head on back and we need to go back down and this is where she was so we can talk to her okay never mind she's gone well i forgot about that i thought you do actually have to go talk to her again but she's just going to go back to the round table so we can talk to her there later 
And basically, there is another quest with her. And then later on, there's more. They added it with this one update. So, we will be doing more with her. But the quest where you're supposed to give her a potion, this is going to be coming up probably in the next several episodes. I'm not going to do that. And the reason why is because I'm going to wait and I'm probably going to give it to this one guy. I already talked about this a little bit, but this one guy is one of the best summons in the game. And because of that, I think I'm going to probably give it to him. And that's the only way to get him as a summon is to give him this potion. So I'm going to have to wait on that quest, the potion quest. So now where we're going to go is we are actually going to go back over here. And the reason why we're going to this grace is because this grace you already have. In episode one, we came here, we would have got this grace. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this ahead. I'm going to see you guys in a moment. Alrighty, well, first things first. Let me go ahead and show you this cave that's over here. So I'm going to put a beacon like right there. But literally from this grace, it's just over here. Now there is a ton of scarabs, but they're all like FP scarabs and stuff. So don't really worry about them. And to get in here, you will have to use a stone key. I don't think you have to use two. You might actually have to use two. But you will have to use stone keys to get into this cave. So this is the Academy Crystal Cave. And go ahead and hit the grace. And I'm going to go ahead and use my lantern. Now this place is a little annoying because there's a ton of these spell casters in here. And if you've already done the Academy Castle... You're going to hate these enemies. You just will. They are really annoying because they will just like machine gun spell you down. Like it's really crazy. But let's go ahead and come on in here. There's going to be a bunch of them coming up. We're just going to try to take them out. And if we're really, really, really quick, we can maybe get all three of them. Nope. Only got two of them. That's okay. Take that guy out. And we're good. Now, there are more, though. Hello. You're also going to get a stone key in here. Because anytime they force you to use two, you always get a refund. It's kind of nice. I don't see the point. Like, why would you do that? Why not just have it so the stone keys, you always have to use one? Instead of making you sometimes have to use two? And then you can find one in the actual place. I guess if you never find it, then you're basically out of luck because guess what you just used two. now i just got to make sure i'm going the right way i think it's this way for the stone key it is it's going to be in this cage down here so let's go and pick that up now let's go ahead and hit this and yeah there's a ton of these craft materials in here so i'm just making sure i grab them all now i'm going to go the other way and i do believe there's more to this place but do you remember that enemy we just fought, that boss, and I said it's annoying only when it's a gank? Well, guess what? We're about to get a gank of that boss. Oh, God. And it will be annoying. So there is a big one in here. Let's try to take out the small guy first, and then we can rush this big one. I'm just trying to get close to him so I can actually war him, take him out. Now, this room over here is annoying. If you run, like, right here, and then you just kind of hit the chest, you're probably going to get hit. But just grab the stupid rune arc and now we can run out of there. You can take that thing out if you have range. But there's really no point. It's just better honestly to just run in, grab the item, and then run out. So now we're going to go down this way. That's going to be the boss. But before we fight the boss, I am totally going to summon my wolves. Hopefully I'm going to be able to actually do it. Nope. So I'm going to go in and buff now. Chug an FP potion. And walk in. And the wolves should allow me to hopefully focus on one. The one you want to go after though is the mage. The mage is on the left. That mage will annoy you so bad if you let it live. So that's the first one. Hello. Unfortunately the wolves want to like go after the mage. Okay. Well if the wolves are going to go after the mage then I'm going to go after this one. The guard counter here really does work good because we're trying to break the guard and the guard counter is very good at breaking the guard. So one Ash of War, this thing should be dead. Now we can focus on the mage. And 
Good job, doggos. You have served me well to distract the enemy for me. Come on over. And that will do so much damage. It's just crazy. One more hit and that thing is dead. And we're going to get a spell for that. But we can also come in here. There's an elevator, so let's hit this. And we got to go all the way to the top. I need to level up, too. I got to stop BSing, and we need to level up. But we're about to go and fight a dragon. So if you remember from the very first episode, there was a dragon. We skipped it. Now we're going to go and destroy it. And it can be a little bit annoying, though. I'm going to be honest. Like, all the dragons at times can be annoying. You can always fight them on the horse. I talked about that before. And the horse can definitely help a lot. But it's just up to you. I'm probably going to summon my wolves for that as well. That's the reason I really wanted to upgrade the wolves to plus five. I knew I was going to be fighting a lot of bosses. And I definitely wanted to summon them for these bosses. So just up here, there is a treasure chest. And what's interesting is I believe we're actually in the academy. If we look, yeah, we're like right in the middle of the academy. That's pretty crazy. So we are going to go back to this grace and then we're going to head down here and that's where the dragon is. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this ahead. I'm going to see you guys in a moment. Alrighty, so let me go ahead and hop on the horse. I'm going to start heading in this location. Remember, this dragon is sleeping. So we can totally take advantage of that and get some free hits. But before we do that, I just want to make sure I can summon. So I'm going to go ahead and summon. And what really sucks is that not having the rune arc means I actually have to chug. And then I have to pull out my dagger. I didn't have to do this before, but now I do. So I'm going to use another one. And I'm going to go ahead and use that as well. And I'm going to try to do this on the horse. Just because I know the horse is so nice. But let's go ahead and rush in and start getting some hits off right away. Hello. Yeah, we're chunking this thing for sure. So hopefully we can get a lot of damage. Now, when it hits you, though, it's going to do a ton of damage to your horse. That's the big part. If it flies, we can totally, like, get out of the way of this dragon. But I'm going to chug if I get hit again. But you can see on how easy this is on the horse just because the horse can take some hits for me. And when it does, like, try to move, I can catch it real quick. If it goes up to actually use the fire attack, I can just run away. The horse is awesome for fighting the dragons. So that's done now, and we got our dragon heart. And that's pretty much the only other field boss to do. There is another boss we have to do. But let's go ahead and... I'm not going to come over here, but this is another one of the smithing stones I talked about. Now there is a grace down here. And there's going to be several items in this location. So I'm going to go ahead and put my beacon there. And we are going to go ahead and just get all the stuff over here. So right away, that is the grace. You can already see it. So just from the dragon, it's very easy to find. And there's going to be a bunch of enemies. There's some plants and stuff over here. And also some of these guys. I call them frog dudes. Because I think they look like frogs. And I'm not used to that attack, but that attack is really useless. Let's be honest, like that missed me completely. But I ain't going to complain. So this one is a little bit stronger. Don't ask me why, because he's naked. I don't know why he's stronger, because he's naked, but whatever. Now you definitely want to look around here, because there is a chest. That's the main thing to grab. But there's probably another item just chilling somewhere. So I'm going to try to make sure I grab all that. Now that's important. Not really. It used to be important. That used to be like the weapon to go to for all the speed runs. Oh my god, that weapon was insane. They nerfed the piss out of it though. It had a stomp ice attack. That stomp ice attack was crazy. My friend actually beat the game using that. And if it wasn't for that attack being so overpowered... Oh my god, we would have struggled because I helped him, but there was some bosses at the end game where it's like, man, he was doing some crazy damage. And of course I got knocked off. Well, that's cool. That's a big stick, by the way. There we go. Let me go ahead and chug. But yeah, that weapon is great. You can also get an Ash of War that does the same thing as the weapon. But it was really easy to come here. It's a special weapon, so it was one of the choices you had. 
where it's like, okay, what do you want to choose for your special weapon? Because you can upgrade a special weapon to max really early in the game, like we did. Well, that was one of the weapons, and I even thought about using it for the noob's guide. It's just that they nerfed it. And when they did that, I went, okay, I won't do that. Same with another sword. I talked about the sword before. There was a sword. It was incredible. Like, it was so ridiculous, to be honest. And they nerfed it. Now, it's still really good. And that axe, honestly, is not that bad. Like, it's okay. But just not really worth using anymore like it used to be. It used to be, use this, and it's so ridiculously overpowered and cheap that you are going to just steamroll the game with it. Now, I'm just picking all this stuff up, but honestly, at this point, I think we've got everything here. I'm just double-checking, looking around. The main thing, like I said, was the chest. Let me jump up here. Nope. Okay, I think we got anything. If I miss something, though, you can always leave a comment, just because I don't want to stick around there too much longer. I'm probably in combat. No, I'm not. Awesome. So over here, I have this little sword. There's a scarab, so we're going to go get that scarab. I think it's a skill. That's why I went ahead and kept it. By the way, a couple of those locations where there are upgrade materials, like the smithing stones, and I've shown you on the map, and I told you you can go and put the beacons and go and get them if you want, those locations, some of them will have scarabs, so just be warned about that. And the scarabs are the ones that are going to drop some of the Somarine smithing stones. So now I can go ahead and take off some of these swords. And again, you know, you can see my map. If you haven't gotten, like, some of these upgrade materials, you can go ahead and do that. Ignore this, by the way, if you see it, just because we're going to do this later. We don't even have the thing we need to actually do this yet. But I did find that when I was exploring this area. So at this point, we have done, I believe, everything I want to do. But there's one last thing, which is going to be to jump up. So I'm just looking around. By the way, there is a grace up here as well. And here's another one of the smithing stones. So if you want to come up here just to get this grace and to get this, go for it. We will be coming up here eventually, though, because this is important up in the ravine area. So where we're going to go now is we're going to actually go back to the lake shore and we're going to jump up top. And up top here, we can get to this cave. Actually, we can get to it from the bottom. But we do want to go and get this because that's going to be one of these jails and we can fight a boss in there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this ahead. I'm going to see you guys in a moment. Alrighty, I just made it noon again because it always wants to be nighttime. And from where the merchant is, we're just going to kind of hug the wall and we are going to find some wind. But before we do that, let me actually get this one item that's up here. Now, what's really funny about this, this was the way on my first couple playthroughs of this game that I actually jumped up to the top because I didn't know there was wind. I really didn't, and I thought that this was the way you were supposed to do it. So there's an item up here, but yeah, I would like jump up to these things, and then like from here, I would like try to jump all crazy-like to get up there. I'm going to see if I can do it real quick, but yeah, you can jump up there, and then when you get up there, you can actually get... Oh my god, I can't make the jump now, but basically you can actually get to the cliff over there. So jump up, there we go. And then from here, you can jump like this and get up. Boom! Look at that, awesome. But I'm a dumb dumb, and I didn't realize if you just come over this way, there's some wind. Oh boy, yeah. Well, you know, that's kind of how it goes with this game. And that's what's really annoying about that mountain which is over here because I really thought there would have been some wind or something to get up there and there's nothing. My God. Okay, so you can't summon in these jails. I didn't really even know these were jails, but yeah, they're like prisons for these bosses. You can't summon, but this is a really easy fight. This guy's gonna have some pyromancies though, so watch out for his fire. But the main thing is you should be able to destroy him no problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and buff up. And you do want to let him spawn. Most of these bosses you can get a free hit on. But because he's like a human, you really can't. Ow. Oh my, my god. Bro. Bro. Can you chill with that? Let me just back up a little bit. So one Ash of War. And I'm going to, yeah, just crush him. My god. And he's going to drop a spell. It's a pyromancy spell. 
and to be honest with you I'm gonna say it probably sucks now I base this on one thing and one thing only I do not use spells I really haven't made a spell build yet and I haven't played around with all of them but I don't ever see anyone using it and I play enough co-op to know that I see all these people using incantations and sorceries I see the same stuff so when I see the same stuff I go oh okay well that's got to be good then where if I never see it I just assume that it's got to be not that good I'm not saying it's terrible I'm not gonna say it's the worst thing in the world that's a legendary like pyromancy spell but if I don't see it a lot I just assume it's not that great okay well we're gonna go this way now which is west from this top part and this is gonna be our easiest way of honestly finding the cave the cave is really hidden if you try to find it from the lake there's actually one of those candle things. If you remember those, I talked about them. They will lead you to like secret locations and the candle thing will lead you to this cave. And what's really crazy is that candle thing, it takes forever to eventually get to the cave. So there's an item right there and there's gonna be some of these fire cultist people over here. The main thing to get in here is one of these prayer books. And I know I've talked about this and I even thought to myself, I should probably go and find the Church of Vowels because I've already brought it up about the stupid giant turtle that you should give the prayer books to and the scrolls to. But the thing is, is that in the Academy, which is the next main castle, there is a teleporter that will take you directly to the Church of Vowels. So I kind of want to wait for that just because I want to hit the teleporter and get there like that. But if you really want to use up your scrolls and your prayer books, I'll show you real quick. The Church of Vows is right here on the map. You can see the structure. And all you got to really do is, this is the Academy Gate Town. You should already have this grace from the walkthrough. You come down this way, get this grace, and then head over here. And eventually you will hit the Church of Vows. And the giant turtle is inside. You might not even realize it's an NPC you can talk to, but yes, you can. And you can give all of your prayer books and your scrolls that you've been picking up if you want to buy spells to the turtle and it's the best way of doing it because otherwise the npcs might move around so that's an emote over there now we can go and find this cave so here's the lake down here so that is the lake but there are some rocks let me show you on the map so here's the cave and i'm just zooming out but from right here where i'm putting my cursor that's where you need to go to find the entrance. Like I said, this is pretty hidden. I'm going to be honest. Kind of hug the wall and eventually you will find it. It's right here. There's some messages down as well. And if I remember right, this is actually a pretty big cave. And the boss here can be a little bit annoying. We are so OP. We're not going to have any trouble. And we can block. Blocking this boss is going to make it a lot easier so let's go ahead and open up this chest you would actually think that this is a troll chest like a trap or something but it's not and there's gonna be a bunch of demi humans in here and the first one is just hiding over there there are these little assassin ones they are annoying so i believe let's actually come over here real quick take him out get out of here get the crafting material there is an item i think up here at the top and there's gonna be a bunch of these demi humans up here as well so take that one out oh that's another one of the little ninja ones trying to grab me let's pick that up totally worth it by the way but whatever i think there's a big one down here so be ready for that yes there is there's a big one asher war though he ain't so big no more pick up this stuff and now we can come this way and this is the wrong way we need to drop down that's the right way but watch out, there's definitely going to be something in here. Oh, hello. It's another big one. Take him out. And there might be some... Yep, there's another small one. That's a ninja one. Oh, another one too. Hello. No. They will bounce off your shield, so you can block them no problem. There's a chest down here. And this is actually a talisman. Pretty good one, to be honest. Because one of the most broken things in this game is a great shield and a spear. And spears will benefit from counter damage, and that talisman will up that counter damage. So what counter damage is, it's like, if I hit you, you hit me, you get counter damage. And the spears, or at least the thrusting weapons, will get that. 
And when you are using a great shield, you can actually block and attack at the same time. It's really kind of busted, I'm going to be honest. So we need to drop down. You can already see it down there. So let's just kind of hop over here and we can just drop down. And let's pick this up. And we can drop down again. And pick this up. Now, there's just a bunch more of the crafting materials. I'm just kind of following the messages. Hop down. I'm looking off the edge, but I know we had to go this way. And there's going to be some of these things in here. Snails, I guess? And they will do frostbite, so that's kind of annoying. But they're really easy to avoid. So I'll just take them all out. Let's pick up the item. Now let's go this way, I believe... There is a lot of them sleeping over here, which is always kind of nice because we can just murder them all. Okay, take them all out. There we go. I don't even think they actually even attack you. Maybe they do when you pick up the item. I don't know, but just take them out now. And this is going to take us kind of to the bottom. I believe we do have to drop off here. I think that's safe. No, it's not. Drop off over here, because if you drop off there, that might be death. We don't want that. And also, you don't want to miss the item. So let's go ahead and hop down. There are more snails down here, but there's three items. So let's pick all of that up. And now, let's go ahead and head this way. Watch out, more snails. So just keep moving. Should be able to hit them and take them out. There we go. One more. And boom, we're good. Yeah, so this place is pretty cool, though, with all the crystals and stuff. I do like it. So this is the boss up here. Now, you can summon for this, but, I mean, it's kind of up to you. The reality is, is that this boss can be very annoying, especially for newer players, but the shield will really make this a cakewalk. So I'm just going to summon, because why not, and try to restore my FP. But a lot of his attacks, he'll bounce off. And I mean, look at the damage I do. Never mind. Yeah, he's a joke. So I don't know if you need to summon or not. Just block him. He will probably bounce off and then just do your Ash of War. And he's a goner. Now over here, this is kind of cool. But this is the NPC I was talking about. If you remember, we got that secret piece of the medallion. Well, the guy actually will give you a hint and kind of tell you to go and find this girl. Well, this is the girl you need to find. So when you talk to her and you have the secret piece of the medallion, she's going to talk to you. I don't think she'll talk to you at all if you don't have the secret piece. But show her the medallion and then she's going to become a summon for us, which is actually quite like awesome. I think maybe we have to reload this area, though. I'm not sure. Yeah, never mind. You just have to just hear the request. Is she going to disappear now? I know that, like, eventually we're going to actually get the summon. Maybe the wolf's gonna die? Is the wolf dead? Okay, yeah, she's disappearing. Yeah, I guess the wolf's dead. Well, that's sad. And, yeah, now she'll talk to you. And later in the game, it might creep you out because you're gonna be riding your horse, like, in one of the in-game areas. And she's gonna be like, hey, remember me? And you're like, Who, who's talking to me? Well, it's her. So, that's the thing. Alrighty guys, I forgot to level up. I have 80,000 runes, that's crazy. But this is going to be the end of this episode. I really do hope that you have enjoyed it. If you have, will you please like the video for me? It always helps me out and I appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe for future episodes of this series. And if you do, make sure you click the bell. That way you can stay notified. Thank you so much for watching and I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day. And poo!